Hey BookTube, how's it going? Um, today, I'm going to be doing a tag, <clears throat> because people don't tag me and stuff, and so I have to play tag by myself, and um, I end up getting really tired running in a circle, um, but I was actually going on to do the local haunts book tag. I went on YouTube to find the questions for it, and I stumbled upon another tag that I thought would be um, a really easy, quick one to do that is really good. Um, this is, um, I saw it on Steve Donahue's channel, and he, he didn't tag me. Um, it's called the Where Do You Find Time book tag. <clears throat> I usually uh, check a watch or a clock, um, the microwave sometimes, sometimes my phone. I find that time all over the place. Um, but this was created by Josh at Working Man Reads. Josh, this is a very good tag. Good job. Um, so, first question. Where is your favorite place to read? Um, it's not my favorite place to read, but I find myself reading there more than any other place. And it is <laughs> um, leaning on the counter um, over the sink with my phone. Um, and one of the reasons why I wasn't doing booktube a whole lot for a while there was because I'm freaking paperback junkie and we are living in a very small, small place and all my books are in storage. Um, and every time we do a book haul or something like that, or we go out and we buy a bunch of books, we have them out for like a week or two. And then we're like, wow, these are taking up a lot of space. We should do something with them. And, um, they end up in storage. Like we'll keep a few and put these in, oh, I'll go back and get them. And it's just like <clears throat> the never ending, um, thing. And, um, I'm reading a lot of ebooks and audiobooks. So, <clears throat> um, a lot of time, uh, I am just leaning up on the counter and I tweaked my back last week. So, I've been leaning up on the counter and like doing like crunches up on the counter and kind of stretching my back out. Um, and it's like the only place where I could be where I'm not in a ton of pain at the minute. So I do that. I wonder if I should just flip this around and show you. So there's some books. Yeah, that's where I go. Yep, right there. I lean right there. That was fun, wasn't it? All right. Um, and then I usually, um, at night, when I go to bed... We are, like, so down with routines right now. Um, I'll usually read right there, and Zoe will be here watching a show or a movie and crocheting or drawing or felting or something like that. <clears throat> and then when it gets to a certain time at night, we have to turn the generator off. Um, so we turn the generator off, and um, then our power starts to just go, because there's no sun. So we're just, like, sucking off the batteries at that point. And once we're out of power, that's it. So um, Zoe, like, goes outside, and will have a cup of tea. She gets all bundled up. She goes outside to have a cup of tea and watch a show on her phone. And then I go get in bed and I'll put on an audiobook or um, listen to a podcast um, until she comes in and 
that's like every night, you know? It's so funny how you get into a, a structured habit of doing things. Um, do you read every day? Um, I have been. Um, I don't read books every day, um, but every day I'm reading. Like, I read... Um, like, I go on Wikipedia for everything, and it's so funny, because the whole time I'm on Wikipedia reading about the history of this, or this person's life, or um, what happened on this day, blah, 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 when I'm doing stuff like that, um, the whole time I'm reading it, I'm like, oh, this is probably not true. Um, anyone could edit Wikipedia, but, um, I'm always, like, that's, like, my go-to, like, oh, I'll check Wikipedia, hang on, um, but between audiobooks and ebooks and my Wikipedia addiction and, um, like, checking the news in the morning, um, it's so funny, like, um, my folks would sit down at the breakfast nook with the newspaper, and I, um, have a cup of coffee and open Google and, um, look at the news on my phone while I'm shipping my coffee. Um, it's so different. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot going on with that. Um, do you read out loud to any family members? <sighs> No. Um, Zoe reads to me way more than I read to anybody else. And um, what time is it right now? It's 12.45 on a Sunday. So by 2.30, no, we'll say 1.30. By 1.30, Zoe will be right here reading the news to me. Because even if I have read it already, she'll read it, and then she'll go, <gasps> Oh! Get this! Da -da 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 -da. And she'll read the article or whatever. It's, it's hysterical. Um, and then I get all pissed off all over again. And then we're both all amped up for, like, the next, like, whatever. Um, it's hysterical. Okay, um... Number four, what is your favorite career for a main character to have? Um, I do really, really like um, the hard-boiled detective. Like, that is, like, super fun. Um, but I also really like, um, the, now here's the funny thing. I like the artist. Um, typically <clears throat> I enjoy my protagonists to be writers, but, um, there's also great stories about painters and sculptors and, um, things of that nature. Oddly enough, I'm not a fan of musicians or actors um, or even filmmakers, and I don't know what that is. But one thing that I do know, um, especially when I was making um, like indie horror films, <clears throat> there were a lot of directors and writers in that scene who are writing and making movies about people writing and making movies. Um, and it's like, oh, it's so meta. But like, I really felt like those were being made for other filmmakers in the community more so than being made for, um, the mass market, the mass populace. Um, and I feel like when you are writing a story or a book about a writer, um, listen here, Stephen King and Mr. Lovecraft, 
like, um, I think people can relate to that a little bit more, especially if they're struggling because everybody can write. Um, if people could write well, that's a whole other thing, but like anybody could write. And so when you're talking about a guy who wants to be a writer and, um, might be writing or something like that. I could see that being easier to digest than say like, um, in Stephen King's misery, like this guy is so famous and all this other stuff, like he's not very relatable and he doesn't become a relatable character. <clears throat> and the thing about misery that I think is really great is that as a reader, you identify way more with the crazy chick in it because everyone is a fan of somebody, you know? So when you have that, you are relating more towards her, but at the same time, you're supposed to be relating or feeling sorry for this dude who's this, like, famous rich writer guy. Um, and the funny bit is to Stephen King, when he's writing that book, I'm sure he never once for a second thought, oh, the sympathetic character here's the woman, you know, like, because I'm sure he saw himself in the writer who is being held hostage by some crazy fan. You know what I'm saying? So as a writer, it's, I find it hard to talk about what my what occupation my main character has because I'm constantly going, oh, that might turn people off, that might turn people off. And I would rather write a story about a guy who you never knew what his occupation was or you don't know anything about him except the situation that he's in. And, um... But when I'm reading stuff, I find myself going back and forth. Like, I'll go, oh, yeah, that's a cool career. I like that. Trapeze artist. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. I could read this. And then I go, like, my editor kicks in, and I'm like, but is this a career that the majority of people reading this book would be able to relate with? And then, like, I get all confused and um, I end up noticing that I haven't been reading the book for the last three pages and I'm more concerned about how to market a book about a trapeze artist to people in Sandusky. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, boy, that was a ramble. I didn't see that coming. Um, do you read at work? Um, well, yes, I'm working now. I also make videos at work, and I also um, do all sorts of stuff that I shouldn't do at work. Um, and what book are you reading now? <clears throat> this is kind of a loaded question, um, because I'm supposed to be finishing two more books today, so I could start this um, buddy read, or group read, tomorrow. Um, and guess what? I have not read those books today. I listened to a couple, um, I listened to The Fungi from Ugoth by H.P. Lovecraft for like the 900th time. I was listening to, um, Supernatural Horror and Literature by Lovecraft. Um, I was reading The King in Yellow for, again, millionth time, um, yesterday and today. Um, then I found an author that I've never read before named Saki, who's some British dude, um, whose name I can't, his real name I can't remember right now. Um, but he wrote a short story called The Open Window, 
and I read it and was like just knocked out. I was floored. It was great. It was just really good. And so I picked up um, the collection it's in, Beasts and Super Beasts. And I was about to start reading that. And then I was like, oh, man, I really need to be. And the funny thing is, while I'm getting that book and telling myself I should be reading the other stuff, I should be re re the reading and the fact that I need to make some videos today. I was starting up a video game on my other computer and listening to The Body Snatcher by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, so I, and I, I, I got halfway through it and I probably won't go back to it. Um, I've read it numerous times and I'm going to be maybe going back to it, maybe not. Um, but this is why I'm like the worst person in the world when it comes to TBRs because I'll just like walk over here and pick something up and start reading it and walk over there. Oh, it's like, um, I don't know, ADHD on crack, like trying to figure out what I'm going to read. Uh, okay, so let's see. And then the last thing is who do you tag? Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to tag some channels that are like brand new to me that um, I just started watching very recently. Um, and I'm sure they don't watch my channel, so I don't know like what I'm doing here, but um, let's see. Jules Burt, a great channel. Um, especially if you like old paperbacks. Um, let's see. Oh, I'll tag Too Fond, too fond of Books. Um, oh, I should be tagging a bunch of March Mystery Madness people. I'll do another tag and tag a bunch of people. Um, another one, Gary Levisi, that I just found. Um, amazing channel. Um, so I got a, and it's so funny, like he'll never know that I tagged him in this. Um, let's see who else we got. Um, the Book Eclectic, super fun channel. Um, and no, no, no. Let's do, um, okay, I'm out of people I just started following. <laughs> wait, am I? I think I am. Okay. Oh, wait, no, there's one more that, um, I found today. Collector's Escape. Um, awesome channel. I've only watched one video, but I'm, oh, gosh, I'm just going through, like, his videos right now, and... Um, they just look amazing. Oh my gosh, look. Vintage science fiction books. Look, and there's Steve down at the bottom. Hi. Um, but anyway. So yeah, that's who I tag. Um, I hope you had fun. And thanks again to Josh for coming up with this. This was a lot of fun. So, um... Take care, everybody, and I will see you soon.